Welcome to the Good Growing Podcast. I am Chris Enroth, horticulture educator with University of Illinois Extension, coming at you from Macomb, Illinois. And we have got quite a show for you today. We have an announcement to make. Uh, we have our special guest with us, Andrew Holsinger. But before we get to our announcement and our guests this week, we must introduce our co-host with us every single week. We are joined by local food systems and small farms educator, Katie Parker and Quincy. Hey, Katie. Hey, Chris. How are things in Macomb today? You know, I got a, a message uh, on, on Facebook today saying, enjoy your last day of nice weather. It's going to start getting cold. So I'm going to go outside and enjoy the beautiful weather that we have today. Yeah, I mean, we could also move south so that way we can continue to enjoy the nice warm weather. That's that's true. Yes, we could migrate southward and, and enjoy that beautiful, warm, humid weather. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mind the escape from it every once in a while, though. So. Right. And so someone who I know is trying to do his best to get as far north as possible, horticulture educator Ken Johnson in Jacksonville. Hey, Ken. Hello, Chris and Katie. Chris, I think your message was wrong. I think the beautiful weather is coming. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> well, Are you like the groundhog? <laughs> yes. Hey, Ken, you can tell us whenever good Bring weather is coming. <laughs> keep seeing a shadow everyone so uh well we are getting ready for the the cooler snap to weather whether you enjoy that or do not enjoy that um we have something that you can enjoy while you're hunkered down inside perhaps uh, so we are going to be doing another winter webinar series and to help us with that we have our colleague horticulture educator andrew holsinger welcome to the show andrew hey good to be here chris katie and ken well, we are happy to have you here today. And so uh, the four of us, we come together every so often, whenever the moon is in the correct phase, to put together a series of webinars. And last year we did a, a fantastic series where we did all types of topics from evergreens to holiday spices and, and, and so much more. This year we have got quite a bit in store for folks as well. And uh, Ken, you are kicking us off, I think, with the first session on December 1st. Is that right? What topic will you, you be covering? And, and also, just so listeners know, we are all tag teaming these topics. And so everyone's got a, a role to play in every class. Yes. So it just won't be me droning on for an hour. <laughs> <laughs> so first off, uh, it was me December 1st. We're going to be talking about unique plants for the holidays. So usually when we talk about holiday plants, it's poinsettias or um, amaryllis or paper whites and all that fun stuff. But we're gonna talk about some some unique plants that maybe you can give as gifts. And if you've listened to the podcast, you probably heard us talk about mm -hmm. some of them already because we used plants that I have acquired over the years as examples. Ken's family gives him the coolest Christmas gifts. I'll just say that much. Some really interesting and unique plants and we thought why don't we talk about this over a webinar series and and some of these plants and their care and that it's early enough december 1st might be able to get some of those for your own uh, gift giving uh, or just buy some for yourself exactly and i'll say you know, some of them depending on where you buy them from you may not get them until spring because a lot of places won't ship them until then because of the cold weather but you can print them off with a nice piece of paper saying hey this is going to be coming or what my wife or kids will do if they like they gave me a coffee plant one year, they gave me a bag of coffee beans. So it's just an idea for you there. Do you drink coffee? No. <laughs> <laughs> do you have do you have a favorite plant that you have of your unique exotic plants that you grow inside? I don't know. It's like picking your favorite kid. It depends on the day. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think since Chris is drinking tea, we can talk about tea and coffee, even though I don't drink either of those and I don't like either of them. There's, there's still fun plants to, to grow. Um, <clears throat> so those are a couple of plants we'll be talking about how you can grow those. And, and it is possible to grow coffee and get um, beans and stuff off your plants. Um, uh, Michelle Bergvogel, who's our program coordinator here, we've had on the show, She's got some coffee plants and she's gotten them to fruit um, here in Illinois. I've done it in Florida. I haven't done it in Illinois. The coffee tree that we had in Florida did not like the transition to Illinois. So 
I had to start over. And then tea is something new we're trying. I got that for my wife for her. I got that for, I got that for Mother's Day for her because <clears throat> she likes tea. And that's got, it's a, in the camellia family group. So they've got some real pretty flowers on there. So if nothing else, it's got pretty flowers, even if it tastes gross, in my opinion, anyway. Yes, Ken, please describe exactly what you said before the show, how it tastes. <laughs> <laughs> to me, tea tastes like you're drinking drinking grass, eating grass. That's what tea tastes like to me. At least the tea I've had, so maybe I'm just drinking the wrong stuff. Well, th this, uh, what I have here is, is tea that I have uh, sweetened with cream and sugar. <laughs> so... <laughs> I'm probably not doing a very good job of encouraging people to snap. <laughs> Tell them how gross these plants are, but <laughs> but there's pretty plants too, right? Yes. So they can yes. always listen in for that. Yes, but if you like tea and coffee, we'll talk about how you can grow that and grow your own. Excellent, excellent. Well, and then Andrew, you follow up uh, Ken's session, and yours is going to be all about going nuts for tree nuts. Uh, so you are going to be uh, doing that on December eighth. Um, what, what, again, with all of us helping in, pitching in, we have our own topics that we are uh, throwing in there. So, uh, Andrew, tree nuts, what, what are we going to talk about that day? Hey, the holidays are a good time for going nuts, right? So mm -hmm. we have uh, chestnuts, walnuts, pecans, hazelnuts. Oh, and one of my favorite are walnuts. You know, that's what I'll be talking about. I, uh, Pursued my master's degree and ended up with this thesis that had uh, northern red oak and black walnut. So, familiar with walnuts, they're they're a good you know addition to the landscape. One of the last ones to leaf out, and uh, you know the those leaves linger on probably the latest in the fall. And you may find some uh, walnuts falling this time of year. I've found a number of them on the ground and. It's nice to see when they turn black and that uh, fruit is on the inside that you can uh, take part of in eating. It is an edible plant and all these are edible. And so I hope uh, you can crack your calendar and put these uh, dates on dates on the calendar so we can uh, present to you all the things to think about through the holidays related to tree nuts. If you, do you like to eat black walnuts? I like the English better, but the black walnuts do, you know, they do have a distinct taste and they're all right. Have you tried black walnuts, Ken? I have. Do you like okay. it? You like not them? really, not really. Oh, got to find very, something this guy will eat. It's, it's, well, it's, it's a very strong taste. I think it's maybe a little bit of an acquired taste. I got them from my backyard and <clears throat> processed them myself and my hands were mm -hmm. green for or brownish for weeks because I didn't wear gloves. Well, at our producer, Wendy Ferguson, is remarking how they're really good in cookies. And I will, yeah, I'll agree as a, like a dessert. I had black walnut ice cream uh, from an ice cream shop in Southern Illinois. Oh my goodness. That was delicious. It's that it's got like a smoky, that smoky nutty flavor. It kind of had that with the ice cream. That was good. Anything in ice cream is good, right? That's true. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Put gummy worms and ice cream and I'll eat it. And then after Andrew's session on December 15th, Katie Parker, you're going to be leading us in talking about winter interest. Tell us a bit about what we will be learning that day. Yeah, so um, it's always kind of boring to look out your window and see just kind of a blah landscape. So there are some plants that we can add to our landscape to add some color texture and uh, also plant architecture to our landscape. So there are a few different types of plants that we're going to talk about. Um, one that I'm excited to, to um, share with those attending the webinar series is plants with interesting bark. So um, this time last year, we did our winter, winter webinar series and I um, had made like a winter decorative planter um, and some plants that I had used in it was uh, red twig dogwood. And so it's really cool. Uh, it has some variegated leaves throughout the growing season, but once they drop it uh, in the fall, drop those leaves in the fall and into the winter, they'll have a red twig to it. 
Uh, and so that just adds some color to your landscape. Some of the other things we'll talk about um, is different types of structures of plants. So weeping plants or con contorted plants. Um, also plants that are going to keep their foliage. So Andrew's going to talk about false cypress and arborvitae. And then Ken is going to tell us about um, something traditional that we think of for color in our landscape in the wintertime is including holly and winterberry. I actually didn't realize that I had a red twig dogwood until this fall in our yard. Um, I had not paid very close attention. And then uh, a few weeks ago, I'm like, the stems are red. And I look closely at the leaves. It's a dogwood. I was so happy. So, Isn't that oh, yeah. awesome? Yeah. That's so they're, cool when you find they're a really plant. really cool. And there's all kinds of irrigations now. So uh, we can really share with you uh, some of those different options for adding color to your landscape. Yeah, I, I feel like the structure of plants right now are really starting to pop, especially as I feel like we're hit, hitting peak fall color right now. I don't know about like, you know, Ken and Katie, we're kind of close by. Andrew, you're a little bit farther south than us, uh, but the fall color is really starting to pop, which makes all the stems and trunks just stand out in contrast. So it's looking good here. Looking good here getting the rake out almost every day, it seems like, so. <laughs> Gotta stay on top of them. Well, following the December 15th session, we are going to take a, a little break just for holidays. And, you know, I, I, I don't know if you guys are going to be in the office. I hope to take some time off. But then January 12th, we are going to be having our final session in the winter webinar series uh, coming up. And that's going to be about wildlife damage that occurs in the winter. And so dealing with that, I will... Uh, lead the charge, I suppose, uh, on that one, and I will be talking about the rodents out there. And by rodents, I mean the, the little guys, the mice and the voles that often damage our plants uh, this time of year. Um, I, I will say Katie is going to be taking on the, the bigger dudes, the large ungulates, the deer, and I've been seeing them just going crazy on the, at least the males um, rubbing antlers on the small trees this time of year. So that that's something that is happening now, but we can talk about how to deal with that wildlife damage. Uh, Ken, you're talking about another type of rodent. I call them tree rats, better known as squirrels. Um. <laughs> I think that that all depends on your perspective of them, if they're tree rats or squirrels. <laughs> hey, if they had a hairless tail, they would just be giant tree rats. That's, that's all I'm saying. <laughs> And then Andrew is going to be uh, getting the smaller mammals for us, the little rabbits and the raccoons that might become troublesome even in the winter still and, and tearing apart our landscape plants and what to do about them. Can we live in harmony with wildlife? Will it ever be happen for us humans? Well, you can dial in to our winter webinar series and find out. We were going to have links below in the description here of this podcast for you to register and sign up. Uh, for each and every one, if you want, or just a select few, whatever perks your interest. Well, folks, we do hope that you once again sign up uh, to watch us and hang out with us and learn all about um, these winter topics, uh, whether we're talking about tree nuts, wildlife, winter interest, or fun gifts that you can give to loved ones, friends, or enemies. You, you can give your enemies gifts too, you know. Ken, I don't know, are we going to have any uh, like poisonous or toxic plants that you can give to enemies? No? Don't do that here? Okay. Maybe, maybe that'll be the bonus. Be the, <laughs> plant you know, your winter team. webinar after dark. <laughs> 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 well, folks, that will do it for us this week. Uh, once again, that link is below in the description. I highly encourage you to sign up, uh, get added to our weekly email list, uh, and check out our blog. Just head on over to go.illinois.edu slash goodgrowing. You will find us there. Well, that does it for us this week, folks. Listeners, thank you for doing what you do best, and that is listening, or if you're watching us on YouTube, watching. And as always, keep on growing.